guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Sunscreen season is officially in full swing, even though technically every season is sunscreen season for me, but you guys know what I mean. So given that, I thought it would be fun to do a video where I review a bunch of new sunscreens. Some of these sunscreens are brand new launches, whereas others have been around for a while but are new to me. For that category of sunscreen, I tried to pick out sunscreens that are best sellers, top rated, or have gone viral. We have a lot of sunscreens to get through in today's video, so let's just jump right into it. Fragrance of the day are two different Sol de Janeiro fragrances. The first is their classic pistachio and salted caramel mist. <laughs> the second is their Rio Radiance body mist. This combination gives me life for good measure. First up is the Paula's Choice Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid, which is a broad spectrum SPF 50 containing octanoxate, octisalate, and octocrylene for active ingredients. Inactive ingredient highlights include vitamin E and tons of plant extracts like chamomile, grapeseed, green tea, elderberry, oat bran, pomegranate, goji berry, and lecithin. The texture of this is a lightweight lotion that is on the liquidier side, liquidier. Is that a word? It's not so liquidy to the point of it being really runny and drippy, but it's definitely, you know, it's in that liquidier realm. When I initially apply this for the first layer, cause you guys know I like to layer up my sunscreens, it blends in seamlessly, but with the second layer, I do have to work with it a little bit more to get rid of the streaks. It's nothing bad. It's just like not the most perfect seamless blend. But aside from that, I don't have any other issues when I'm layering this. And even with the second layer, I really enjoy how this feels as I'm rubbing it into my skin. It's hydrating and moisturizing without feeling oily or greasy at all. And that is actually an issue that I ran into with a few sunscreens in this video, so it was nice that this just felt good to apply. I would consider this to have a nice glowy finish when it's fully dried down, and in terms of wearing this under makeup, for the most part, I don't have any issues, but sometimes I'll get a little bit of pilling just like on my temples. That seems to be where I get pilling most often, which is kind of random, but it's definitely not one of those sunscreens that pills all over once you start applying makeup on top of it. For the most part, I don't have issues. So all in all, I really enjoy this sunscreen. The only issue that I had with it is that it did sting my eyes a little bit and I had that issue with so many sunscreens in this video. I don't know what it is. I feel like I go through phases with sunscreen where for a while I can apply a chemical sunscreen like right up close to my eyes. I have no issues and then I'll have a few weeks where no matter what I test out my eyes are like burning and watering. So if you do tend to have issues with eye irritation and chemical sunscreens just know that a lot of these may be problematic for you. You might want to apply these all over the face, avoiding the eye area, and then use a mineral sunscreen or something else around the eyes. Next up, we have the Dr. Jart Every Sunday Sun Fluid. That's such a cute name, I didn't even notice that. This also has SPF 50 with homosale, octisale, octocrylene, and avobenzone for active ingredients. Not really anything worth highlighting in terms of inactive ingredients aside from vitamin E, but the one thing that I do wanna call out with this is that it is not completely fragrance-free. It does have lavender oil added to it, however, this doesn't irritate my skin. The texture of this is an extra, extra lightweight lotion. It's one of those sunscreens that starts to feel a bit watery as you rub it into the skin. It just like thins out in texture, which I always really enjoy. But even with that watery texture, I still think that it feels moisturizing on the skin. Obviously not as moisturizing as like a thick barrier cream, but some moisturizing elements for sure. Because of that really watery texture, it's not the most seamless sunscreen to blend. I do have to work with it a little bit even upon initial application, but it's not something that remains streaky on my skin. I can get it to fully blend in without streaks. I just gotta work for it. This dries down to have a really beautiful natural to naturally glowy finish and it works great for me under makeup. I don't experience any pilling with this. So I totally understand why this is one of the most highly rated sunscreens at Sephora. If you're looking for a sunscreen that you can just pick up in store at Sephora, but you want it to be similar to an Asian sunscreen, this is gonna be for you. Next up is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Sunscreen, which has the most beautiful packaging. I love Glow Recipe packaging. This just like light pearlescent pink, stunning. It's a broad spectrum SPF 50 and it's a combination sunscreen. It contains zinc oxide, homosalate, octocrylene, and octisalate. Other than that, there are a ton of ingredients in this 
cannabis that are worth highlighting, including sorbitin olivate, lactic acid, watermelon extract, niacinamide, aloe juice, hyaluronic acid, zinc gluconate, and copper gluconate. However, this is also not fragrance free. It does contain added fragrance. Again, I haven't had any issues with this on my skin in terms of irritation, but I always like to call that out in case you have super sensitive skin. I feel like this is a hybrid between a cream and a lotion because it's definitely moisturizing and on the creamier side in terms of sunscreens, but it's not like a thick, heavy cream. It's a lighter weight cream, a lotion-y cream. Similar to the Paula's Choice sunscreen, this applies really nicely upon initial application, but with the second layer, it's not super seamless. I do have to go back and forth a bit to make sure that I'm really rubbing it in nicely and getting rid of streaks. And with that second application, I also noticed some areas that were a bit whiter due to the zinc oxide, especially in my hairline. It kind of just left like whiteness there. But other than that, everything else fully absorbed and did not leave a white cast on the skin on my face. I also got a little bit of pilling with this with that second application, mostly just on my eyelids. Again, not all over, but it was there nonetheless. In terms of finish, I would say that this is definitely glowy and slightly radiant. It definitely does have some pearlescence to it, but it's not as intense as something like the Super Goop Glow Screen that is very pearlescent all over. What ended up being a deal breaker for me with this sunscreen is that I felt like it just stayed feeling damp on my skin. It never fully dried down and it stung my eyes so, so bad. I applied this before I went to get my hair done. And for those of you that get your hair colored, you know how long that process can take. So when I started to realize how irritated my eyes were, I was like, oh crap, I'm stuck in this chair for like three hours. So uh, this was a fail for me, not something I'm going to continue wearing. But again, I can see why so many people love this because it gives you that slight pearly sheen without it looking like you're dripping in highlight. Next up is the Shiseido Ultimate Sun Protector Lotion. This is an SPF. 50, the active ingredients are avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene, and inactive ingredients worth mentioning are sucrose, green tea extract, and strawberry extract. I was super excited about this when I first swatched it on the back of my hand because it's a really liquidy gel. However, it feels pretty oily when you're rubbing it into the skin, and I just do not like that feeling. I know some people love the feel of a facial oil, but as an oilier gal, I, I don't like it. And it reminds remained oily to the touch even after it fully dried down. But it is completely streak free. I don't have any issues applying this. It blends really nicely and I don't experience pilling. So at that point I was like, okay, even though I don't love the feel, it applies great. So maybe once it's dried down, I'll really like it. But the final nail in the coffin for me was the finish. It definitely is a sunscreen that I would consider to have a dewy finish and it remained looking wet in a lot of areas, which believe it or not, is not really something I like. So this is not a sunscreen I ended up testing out under makeup because because again, like I said, it dried down still feeling oily. So that combined with the wet finish, I knew it was gonna be a nightmare under makeup for my skin personally. But may work great for you and be just what you're looking for if you have extra dry, dehydrated skin. Or if you want a straight up oil, this might be for you. I'm sure you can imagine where this is going for me. It's the Paula's Choice Healthy Glow Invisible Sunscreen Oil. This is an SPF 30 containing avobenzone and octanoxate, and nice inactive ingredients worth mentioning are ferulic acid and sunflower seed oil. If you have oily skin, run for the hills because this is just a straight up oil, not for you. But I do have to say that out of all of the facial oils that I have felt, this is definitely one of the best because it's not greasy. To me, there's a big difference between an oil that feels greasy and one that just feels soft. And this just feels soft. So while you couldn't pay me to leave this all over my face and test it out under makeup, I know that some people love a facial oil. And if that's the case, I think this would be one to go for. Next up is a new sunscreen from Neutrogena, or I guess it's new because this one is fragrance free. It is the Invisible Daily Defense Lotion. This is an SPF 60 containing avobenzone, homosalate, octisalate, and octocrylene for active ingredients. And like most new Neutrogena sunscreens, the only other ingredient worth mentioning is vitamin E. This feels like a creamy moisturizing lotion when you apply it. There is something slightly oily about it, but it's nowhere near something like the Shiseido sunscreen or definitely nowhere near something like the Paula's Choice oil. I have no issues layering this up in terms of streaks and when this fully dries down, that like slightly 
tiny oily feel that I felt when rubbing it in goes away. It doesn't feel greasy on my skin after that. And it has a really nice naturally glowy finish. This works well under makeup when I don't have pilling with it, but I have had a couple instances in testing this out where again, it kind of just like pills around my temples. Just so bizarre. The other new sunscreen from Neutrogena that I wanted to try out is the Clear Face Face Serum Sunscreen. This is also an SPF 60. It contains homosalate, octocrylene, octisalate, and avobenzone. And this actually has two other inactive ingredients worth mentioning aside from vitamin E, and they are green tea extract and bisabolol. This feels like a lightweight gel lotion. And again, there's something slightly slippy and a tiny bit oily about it when rubbing it into the skin, but it's one of those that also dries fully without leaving a lasting oily feel. I would say this has a natural to naturally glowy finish and same as the other Neutrogena sunscreen for the most part, it worked under makeup, but I did have a little pill around the temple hairline area. And this dang my eyes too, really bad. I wonder if for me, it has anything to do with seasonal allergies. Like I feel the stinging so much more if I'm already having some allergy issues. I have no idea. So this one I feel confused by because I feel like Neutrogena has so many sunscreens in this exact same bottle at this point. They have different labels and different packaging, but like this bottle is exactly the same. And while they have different claims, I feel like there's like nothing that different between them. So I don't know, it's not bad. I just feel like I'm kind of confused on why they came out with this, given that they already have others that are so similar. Second to last, we have the First Aid Beauty Weightless Liquid Mineral Sunscreen. This is a broad spectrum SPF 30 with zinc oxide and it contains jojoba ester, squalane, vitamin E, and licorice root as well. This is the one sunscreen in this video that is tinted. I feel like we haven't really had that many new tinted sunscreens launches, so I was excited to be able to include one in this video. I would consider this to have a medium, in terms of like depth of color, a medium neutral tint, which is great because it's not one that's going to look super orange on your skin. And the texture of this one is super liquidy and runny, but feels so greasy. Like to the point of me being actually grossed out when I was applying it and then layering it for a second time, I just was like, oh my God, this feels so gross. And I went and looked at reviews because I was like, I wonder how this is doing. Why would they come out with something that feels this greasy? And I saw so many reviews from people saying that they loved how it felt. It felt like silk on their skin. I was like, did I get a different product? It does layer really well. And once it's dried down, it doesn't feel oily. So that's good. If you're somebody that likes the feeling of an oil, but you don't love the look of an oil, this may be of interest to you. And once it is dried down, I feel like it gives you sheer coverage with a glowy, t my hands are crazy today. I'm so sorry. Sometimes when I just like really get going, my gestures <laughs> are out of control. Sheer coverage and a glowy to dewy finish. So I don't know. I feel like this is one of those products that is really hit or miss. For me, it's a miss because I just, I couldn't get behind the feel of it. This is one that feels greasy, not oily. You know how I was saying about the Paula's Choice oil, like that one is soft and smooth. That feels like a silky oil to me. This feels like grease in my frying pan. And last but not least is the newest launch out of all of these. It is the Naturium UV Reflect Antioxidant SPF 50. I was so excited to test this out because their original sunscreen, which is is that called their like glowy sunscreen? You guys probably know what I'm talking about. That one is definitely a thicker, creamier sunscreen and it has a very glowy finish. So if you have dry skin, I think you'll love it. But for me personally, in the summertime especially, it's just like not my kind of sunscreen. So when I saw the initial buzz about this launching, I was super excited, hoping that it would be like their oily friendly, oily friendly, oily skin friendly sunscreen. Okay. So this is an SPF 50. It contains avobenzone, homo, salate and octisalate and sacro is it saccharomyces ferment or saccharomyces ferment hmm this is extremely liquidy and runny but for me this is one of those sunscreens that feels very very oily when you're rubbing it in once it fully dries down i wouldn't say that it continues to feel oily on the skin however i do feel like it's a sunscreen that i can just feel sitting on my skin it's definitely not a sunscreen that feels completely weightless i do like the finish of this i would say it's like naturally glowy which to me is like less than glowy but not matte 
even though I feel like I saw some reviews saying that this was a matte sunscreen. I would not consider it to be that. It definitely doesn't look matte on my skin. And in fact, I feel like it looks dewy in some areas, like especially around my nose and mouth. But other than that, it's like naturally glowy to glowy. Editing me here. I was editing this video and realized I forgot to talk about how this sunscreen wore with makeup and it did not wear well. I swear it looked like my makeup melted off my face in some areas, like all over my forehead, under my eyes, like a chunk of my concealer just looked like it melted away. So maybe don't use this sunscreen for that purpose. Ugh, I wanted to love this so badly. I feel like if the texture was different, I would be obsessed with it given how liquidy it is and I don't know. It just wasn't quite what I was hoping for, which I feel like is kind of the theme with several sunscreens in this video. Overall, I feel like the sunscreens I tested out here were more flops than What's the opposite of flop? I have quite literally no idea. So let's just say I ended up not loving more sunscreens in this video. <laughs> I just blacked out. I was hoping to love more of the sunscreens that I tested out in this video than I did. I feel like I ended up not loving more than I loved. Which, you know, just happens sometimes and I personally still feel like is helpful to see in terms of reviews. I not only enjoy watching what people love, but also what didn't work for people and why. So hopefully you feel the same way and you found this video helpful. But I don't know about you guys, this got me feeling very inspired to just test out a bunch of new Asian sunscreens because I knew that most of them would not let me down. Stay tuned for that video. That will be coming soon. I am super excited about it. Otherwise, if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. And let me know in the comments below if you had a similar experience to me with any of the sunscreens I talked about here or did you have a different experience? Let's all chat sunscreens in the comments below. In case any of these sounded right up your alley, they will all be listed in LinkedIn order of mention as always. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.